Well, I finally got this uh, top side done. Got uh, two and in some cases four coats of the uh, top side wet edge um, polyurethane paint. Um, really pleased with the results. Uh, some of this was just rolled on, like the four for example. Um, other elements I um, rolled and tipped. And uh, you can see an example of that here. So um, put the uh, Norman pins back in. I'm really pleased with the way this came out. Uh, it's surprisingly uh, better than I expected, so this is good. Well, stick with me and I'll show you exactly how I got this done. So the whaler's got two coats of primer on it. Um, getting ready to put a coat, of, the first coat of uh, polyurethane. Um, the uh, top side polyurethane in classic whaler blue. Before I do that though, I'm going to lightly sand the primer with um, 220 and um, then we'll go ahead and get that uh, polyurethane on here using the uh, roll and tip method for the most part, not all of it. I've got it completely hand sanded now. Use 220 grit um, and did it all by hand. Uh, I'm going to do is wash it down now. Use a mixture of ammonia with Dawn. Uh, hose it off. Let it dry. Uh, tomorrow I'll wipe it down with acetone and then we'll put the final coats of uh, polyurethane um, classic whaler blue from Total Boat on it. So we've sanded it, washed it down, getting ready to put a final coat on. Uh, before we do that though I'm going to wipe the whole thing down with acetone. I will be using uh, safety gear as well because uh, it's pretty strong as are the uh, thinners that I'll be using in the uh, final coat of paint. So give me a minute, I'll get this wiped down and we'll start painting. First thing we'll be doing is getting the paint ready. I do have a wet polyurethane. Um, it is total bulk paint but I'm using uh, the Petite Thinner and also the Petite Performance Enhancer. And I'll be adding that, it really makes a difference when uh, when you're putting this on. I'll probably catch some heat from mixing Petite products with Total Boat. Um, couldn't find the uh, Total Boat stuff that I wanted and I was able to get the Petite and to be honest the results came out pretty good so um, I don't think there was any problems and if you look at the mix of what these things are composed of, uh, the thinners and the performance enhancers, the, they're all, all in the same family group. Anyway, results speak for themselves. So I've got my strainer. Let's get this poured into here. It's a medium strainer, but uh, for what we're doing, I think that should be uh, that should be plenty enough. Last thing I'm going to do is take uh, the two brushes I'll be using. One of them is just a regular chip brush. The other one's a tipping brush, which is this one right here. And uh, I'm dipping it thinner. And then shake off the excess. This is to help it uh, or spin off the excess. All right, I'm going to start rolling out and tipping this area. Um, I'm going to get this area first. Uh, the paint is fresh, so uh, the idea is that it's going to um, roll and tip very easily. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to barely wet the tip of that brush with paint. Not using the brush to put paint on, the tipping brush, but just enough paint to keep it wet so I can smooth out any air bubbles that are left from rolling. I'm going to put some uh, breathing protection on because this stuff's quite potent. So, um, let me go ahead and get that done. We can close up in here.
I actually want a really thin coat of this stuff on here. Because I'm going to tip into what I had just done before so I'm going to run that brush lightly across I'm just putting the weight of the brush on here I'm not I'm not pressing down on it at all so this is the correct way because I rolled up and down and in this case I tipped sideways and I'm actually going to redo this the good news is this is just the first coat so that uh, if that results in any defects, it's, they should have. So in order to keep this video to a reasonable length, what I've done is um, shortened the uh, painting process. Uh, this first coat is being rolled out for the most part. It's going to be uh, finished up, sanded with uh, 220 grit before I go on to the uh, second coat. One of the challenges of painting outdoors is you'll see that there's a lot of specks, dust motes, um, all kinds of little things that can get into the paint. And they typically show up afterwards. Um, they never show up while you're painting, uh, usually um, once it's dry. So you can uh, sand those down between coats and do your best to keep the dust down. Uh, my biggest challenge here was keeping ants off the boat. Luckily, after I painted them, uh, insects um, steered clear. I guess they didn't uh, appreciate the smell of the, uh, the paint or the thinners. Well, I'll be putting on the second coat of paint to this uh, Boston Whaler 13. Um, first coat came out good, we got it sanded. Now it's time to get another coat. So I'll be doing some detail stuff now and uh, doing some rolling and tipping. So I want to show you how that, how that goes. So let me show you precisely how I'm going to tip this in. Uh, you saw that I loaded the brushes up already. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is paint in, get a coat of paint into this little ridge here. Now this is not the tipping brush, but the reason I'm doing this is I want to tip upward from here when I do tip um, into the area that's going to get rolled and tipped. So I'm loading up the roller right now. And we're going to get a reasonable coat on here. I say reasonable because the advice is to roll a thin coat in. But you don't want it too thin. If it's too thin, you won't be able to really tip it. So, although this is a thin coat, it's not a terribly thin coat. And I'll, and I'll show you exactly why i um, doing it this way, where I brushed in that ridge on the bottom. So here's the brush I'll be using for tipping. It's already been dipped in the uh, thinner and it's been uh, spun out so it doesn't have too much thinner in it. I'm lightly wetting the edge with the paint and what we're going to do is just basically very lightly draw it upwards. And if you notice I'm starting at that ridge 
that I brushed in. And the reason for that is so that it'll blend in. Um, if I do it separately or go sideways, it's not going to blend in very well. So I'm barely putting any pressure on this. It's just enough where you can feel it sticking. And so that's tipped in. And that should smooth out, we hope. And we shall see. Uh, as this paint settles, those additives will help to smooth it out. So I actually rolled out two uh, coats of paint onto the floor and uh, let it cure. And the reason for this was that I uh, wanted to get into the boat so that when I tipped and or rolled and tipped the sides, I'd be able to see what I was doing. I noticed on the first go around that leaning over the boat and painting the insides um, was less than desirable. Didn't have a good view of uh, what was going on. You did all back here, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. How much paint you got left? After this, maybe four ounces. Oh, okay. So this is the last, the last hoorah. Dude, two coats. There's like freaking three or four coats on this. I think we might have overkilled it a little bit. I'm just amazed that this tipping stuff works as good as it does. Well, you know there's been a lot more to the painting than that, but I didn't want to put 30 minutes of uh, me rolling and tipping and rolling um, on a video. Uh, I hope you've gotten something out of this video. I'm really pleased that we've uh, got this top side finished. I'm going to be turning the boat upside down and um, getting ready to do the hull. We'll do some of the work in the winter, but we'll get most of it done in the, uh, in the spring. That's when uh, the painting once starts warming up again. It's getting a little cool now. Evenings are in the 40s, so um, definitely can't put any more paint on. But anyway, if you've, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, hit like, share, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.